see you all here. Uh, my name is Skinnison Dewingit, or Joel Starland. I'm a wolf. I'm from Wolf Wheelich. My name means man on top of the mountain. And I just had a question. What were you guys doing earlier this morning? Fisheries. Yeah, going to the fisheries. Was that close to the lake? Yeah. Yeah. What was, do you guys know why they were doing that? To put the numbers of sockeye salmon up. Yeah, this, uh, this river here is pretty small, but it's got all the salmon that, uh, all the species of salmon, and it's almost uh, gone extinct, as low as 200 sockeye. Wow. Uh, so it could blink out and disappear forever. And uh, you can't just like make another hatchery and rebuild that population because those fish eggs are designed specifically for that lake. It's got low oxygen and they got smaller eggs compared to the normal fish eggs. So if you try to, if it went extinct and you tried to put more fish eggs in there to bring in another species, you wouldn't be able to do it. They'll be, they'll be gone forever. But anyway, the reason I'm telling you that it's kind of neat. You see that mountain over there? That one that almost looks like a half blown up volcano? Yeah. There's a bowl there that's called Sockeye Mountain, Anamasa. Huh. And throughout the fall or throughout the spring, you'll see the sunset over there getting closer and closer and closer. And then it'll look like it's going to set inside the bowl there. And that means that the Sockeye are now running inside this stream. And I just found it would be really uh, cool. kind of strange if the Sockeye ever went extinct in here. We'd still have Sockeye Mountain there. Hmm. But I'm going to be here, uh, we're talking about totem poles or take a tour, Sure. but uh, it's going to be more of like a walk throughout our history here. Please. Uh, I can't tell all the stories of these totem poles, even if I knew all of them, uh, because I'm from uh, the house of Wielich and I can't speak on somebody else's history or totem pole. That's not the way we do it. So I will take you to our totem poles and give you a history. We're one of the older... Um, uh, we're the founders of uh, getting out here, so it kind of touches a lot back further in history. And if you guys have any questions, stop and ask me. If, but let's take a walk this way. So who we are and how we operate here. A lot of First Nations throughout province are uh, based on a band council system. So they have people elected every two years. They come and sit at a table and then they'll speak for the entire territory of which they represent. But we're lucky here because uh, we've been able to keep intact our hereditary governance structure. So we have a house group, and I was telling you my house group is Wolf Wheelich. We have a chief, sub-chiefs, matriarchs, and our house members. And each, um, each house has their own territory. And right now, if you went to get your lake, down here, we're on the territory land of Waslam, and this is my territory up here of Wolf Village around the Meziad area. Wow. So you have to go to your territory to get everything you need. Uh, this one time I was trapping, and I went to go visit my yet, and I said, yeah, I'm trapping. I'm trapping up here at Meziadin. I'm also trapping here at Harper, and I'm trapping down here at 26 Mile. You guys know what yet means, right? Yeah. I'm assuming, okay, grandfather. Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> and my yet said, aww. And without saying anything, I knew I must have did something wrong. And I said to my yet, yeah, did I do something wrong? He said, you're all right to go trapping up here, Joel. But did you ask permission to go trapping here and here? I said, yeah, I'm from Gitmiao. I don't need permission to go trapping on my own land. And he says, Joel, that's not the way it works. Each house has their own territory. And in order to access that territory, you have to ask permission. And I felt really bad. I said, yeah, what do I do? How do I make this right? He says, you talk to the head chief of the Frog Clan, Gemla Field, and he'll tell you what to do. And I was just 17 years old and I called called this chief, he's a big chief, and I was so nervous, I was shaky, scared, and I said, Edgar, I'm trapping on, I've been trapping on your territory, 
and I didn't know I was supposed to ask permission, but I'm asking you permission now. He said, go right ahead, Joel. Go right ahead, go trapping. And I went downstairs and I went to go play video games. Back then, it's nothing like you guys are now. I played 007. <laughs> but I, the phone rang and my mom says, Joel, Edgar is on the phone, that big chief, and my heart just stopped. I was like, oh man, I'm in so much trouble. And I answered the phone and I said, hello Edgar. He says, hey Joel, I just want to say that's really good what you're doing. Context of our governance and how we operate before I get into uh, the total poll. Cool. Does anybody know what a total poll is or what the purpose of a total poll is? Close, yeah, very good. Anybody else? It tells the story of the land and the people. Yeah. So, this one. Yeah, stories and history. This one I'll tell you about because this is my lineage. Wast Lamb, this is actually his totem pole. Uh, but we're the brother clan and we share the same history. We go back. So, 12,000 years ago, we originated in Prince Rupert. And back then, Prince Rupert, you know where the ocean is right now? Before that, the ocean was way up. The whole city of Prince Rupert was covered by the ocean back then. That's how long ago it was. Wow. And this lady, this lady, she found this little grub worm in the forest and she took it as a pet. And then this pet started to become closer and closer to her and it started to grow. And it actually took a human form like you see right here. Cool. And that baby, it always had its hands in its mouth, just like a fly cleaning itself. And it started to grow and grow and grow. And then in that community, they had long houses like this. And wood, mysteriously at night, started to get eaten up by something and they had no idea what it was. It eat up all the wood, the houses. And then the last house at the end of the village, they stayed up all night. And they said, we're gonna find whatever it is that's eating all this wood, it's not going to eat our house. And they stood up and to their surprise there's this giant grub worm that came emerged out of the ground. And they killed that grub worm and stabbed it. And they started to dig a trench and to find out where that grub worm came from. And it led right to that baby's cradle. And the mother, she was devastated. She went to the ocean and she started to cry and she started to curse and everything started to become unsettled. There was earthquake, the ocean started to turn milky and big waves um, and people were actually dying. They said the spirit of that baby started to go through, uh, through the valley of Metlakatla and people were just dropping dead from that spirit and we had to leave that area. We left that area and that's when we started to migrate to, to get near. And we skimmed some that huge bird up there. That's the one that led us here to get me out. We stopped at a few spots. He says, no, this is not your land. This is not for you. Keep going. And eventually led us here to get me out. Cool. Maybe there was. But you know what we're finding out? That area where this happened in Prince Rupert. You look at Mount Hayes and you see all these holes. That's what they said is where they dug out the trenches Whoa. to find the baby. But what we're finding is uh, through uh, geological assessments, that land was so compressed by the glaciers. They're so heavy. And when the glaciers started to recede, all that ground became unstable. Mm -hmm. And there was different, uh, uh, different things that happened to the ocean. Uh, why it started to turn that milky color and the people that were dying there's places in around the world where gases are released when the earth is unstable and kills people so it is a story but it's story captured in history if we told you you know what there used to be glaciers there and ground sprung up and there's nothing left would you guys remember that i don't know if you guys would but it's incorporated into a story and history Cool. And uh, that's where we came from and how we came here. Cool. So I'll stop, pause there, see if there's any questions you guys may have before I move on. Usually, um, uh, uh, 
kind of a, a nod to your father clan. So if you become a chief and uh, you pay respects to your father because you're standing on your father's shoulders. So most of the bottom of the totem pole, you know, people say, I started at the bottom of the totem pole to say like, I'm not as uh, respected or I'm not as whatever. But it's actually not true, not true. because uh, you're standing on your father's mm -hmm. shoulders. And so what these totem poles do, they tell the history. So Glass Lamb, this is his totem pole. In 2014, I think he raised this totem pole. And uh, he invited, he had a, what's called a flight of hitch. And he went to every community and he said, I'm going to be raising a totem pole. I'm going to invite you. I'm going to invite you. And I'll invite you. And this is your totem pole, actually. Right here, this is his totem pole. Cool. We're standing on his land right now. This cool, is Trig V. This is his. Good. But, um, so they invite all those chiefs and they all come out. Everybody comes out. And they have their father clan pack this over and they have ropes and they lay it down and they, they have a coordinator that uses one of those A-frames you see on that wolf there. They set up an A-frame and they're able to pull this up and stand this totem pole up and secure it into place. Wow. And they sing a, a lament song. It's like a sad song. It's a sad song that has been sung at every single person that has ever passed away in his family, going back thousands of years. And uh, after that, he invites everybody over to the feast hall and they go have a feast. And he, they stand up and they say, this is where we started in Prince Rupert. This is the history that has happened. This is who we are. And this is the boundaries of our land. It's at the height of that mountain. The border with our neighbor is that creek and it goes all the way over to here. And then at the end of the feast, everybody stands up and they say, we've heard what you said and we know this to be true. This is who you are. This is your land that you speak of. Or they say, there might be a discrepancy. I've never seen that though. And there's a whole nother process that follows after that. Mm. You guys I notice anything see. different about this photo pole? Why? <laughs> Strange, eh? They all used to be facing this way. Wow. They all used to be facing this way. And there was a deal made with, uh, I can't remember who it was, but uh, the Gitniao people, the main chiefs, the matriarchs were in the community there at the cannery. And uh, they made the deal where they said, we'll take some of these photo poles, read them, right? Ah. So Glass Lamb said, no, no, we want to have our photo poles the way it should be, yeah. facing the rising sun. That's how we bury our dead people too. You look at the graves, they're all facing this way, head first, feet first. So this is the total, wow. first total pole. He's leading the way to say, we're going to, we're not just going to face it this way just so tourism uh, likes it that way. We're going to face it the way that it should be. Because in a way, it's like we're turning our back on all of our, our people that passed away that are behind us. And it's a disrespect. So we're going to be doing that. Cool. So any questions? I just keep, I don't want to leave anybody behind. No. Okay. Okay. So I'll bring you guys into a little more modern day history. Facing, it was the same thing. There's smallpox was the first one. And then there was the pandemic, Spanish pandemic, they called it. It was an actually a Spanish pandemic. Everybody around the world did not want to acknowledge the pandemic because they wanted to keep the wars going and keep the economy running. But it was just the Spanish that said, uh, they didn't care about that. They're saying all these people are dying. It's this new flu that uh, is spreading around the world. So everybody called the Spanish pandemic. But anyway, so many people were dying here so fast. If you look back in this field here, you'll see a bunch of little divots and little holes. And what those are are unmarked graves. So many of our people died. They were dying so fast that we had to bury them and we couldn't put up a proper headstone. So we're looking at ground penetrating radar. That's why I see the cones out there right now to shoot down in the ground and see if we could identify those. What they say is when somebody passes away and you don't have your headstone and the uh, fence around them, it's kind of like their foot sticking out of the ground still. 
Your, their business is not done and they're not resting. So we want to put some rest to the people and pay respects to the ones that weren't able to because of the situation. Any questions? There's, there's a time frame to put up a stone and a fence, right? About a year or two? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So that's good that it's good that you guys are going to do that ground pen creek. I'm going to tell you about my uncle Josh. Joshua Rush. He was playing with all his friends at his house, and uh, his grandmother said, Josh, go fetch me some water because we don't have running water, eh? So you have to go down the river. So he grabbed his pail. said, I'll be right back, guys. I got to go grab my beat some water. So he went down to the river and he grabbed some water started to walk up and all of you were gone all of you were gone all his friends were gone he says jeez where are my friends can you guys guess what happened by who by Indian agent RCMP oh, yeah. They all came in, they took it, took the kids away. He went to them to get water. I said, Josh, you're so lucky, right? You're so lucky you didn't get taken. He said, it was so hard. I lost all my friends. I lost my childhood. Even though a lot of bad stuff happened to them, he said, he's got survivor's guilt. I should have been there with them. I should have been there. That happened. Uh, quite often. And it just hurts because, like, I can't imagine you guys being taken away. Like, no. you imagine that? How no. scary that would be? Nobody around and you taken away from your mom, your deeds, or yeah. That's the cruelest thing anybody could ever do to anybody. Absolutely. I'd rather be killed. And my two older brothers got taken. My grandfather got shotgun. And my granny had to try that shotgun away from my grandpa. Because he wanted to shoot them because they'd taken his grandkids. Yeah. They only didn't take my two brothers. They took all my cousins. We didn't live here. We lived in Paris there. They took all of them. They all went to residential school. And the survivor guilt you're talking about doesn't only happen to that person, but it happens to the grandparents. Because yeah. the grandparents want they're desperately to have yeah. their grandkids back and they couldn't, you know, and that's where alcoholism comes yeah. in, you know, and my grandfather never forgave himself and he drank himself to death yeah. because of that. And then what about the people that went to residential yeah, school? What they, do they think about the parents? Yeah. Why did you let me? They thought they got abandoned. I had Why did you let me be yeah. taken? It wasn't a matter of them being let to be taken. The police and the government agent just took them. You guys, like I was walking to work, I work in here, this is our museum, getting our hereditary chief's office, we're homeless, we don't have a, because we're not a band, we're, it was really hard to try to get, he said, I would, me and my brother were in residential school on Vancouver Island, we were taken away from my mom and my dad, and we were put there, and we were so scared, we didn't know what was going on, we had no idea where we were, and then he said, I got called, we got called into the office and we thought we did something wrong and uh, I don't know what you call him, reverend or preacher. preacher with the white thing here he said I'm sorry your mom she's passed away and they were so sad and his brother Sindith's brother asked can we go home to pay respects and be with our family since we lost our mom and that nun said no, you guys are like lost puppies that nobody wants. They didn't want you, so you can't go home. How, like I was saying, that's the, if you want to kind of categorize the worst things you can do to anybody as a human, taking the children away and then saying those sorts of things, that's more wicked than killing somebody in my opinion because they killed they're trying to kill the Indian 
right? They're trying to kill hereditary. They're trying to kill these totem poles. That's the, that was the objective. And that's why that, to or why that headstone is there. As he couldn't come back home, he does not know where his mom is buried. There's no place to put the headstone. That's why it sits here amongst the totem poles. Her spirit is here, but he doesn't know where her body is. I know it's pretty heavy. People probably were not expecting this, but uh, this is the history. When we talk yeah. about totem poles, we're talking about history. And I have to tell the history. I can't color it a different way. I can't edit it. This is what's happened. But you know what's cool? You guys are here. Yeah. You guys are still here. You guys are beautiful. You're smart. Precious, and we're we've survived. And you know what? The next 150 years, we're gonna do more than that. We're gonna be thriving. I already see it. It's already starting. I could see it here in Gitanya. We're starting to figure out how are we gonna live amongst each other in this world in Canada. What is that relationship going to be? How are you gonna recognize who we are? How are we going to bring our laws together? It's starting to happen. One day, the court said, yes, this was your land. You guys didn't lose in a war, and you guys never sold it. So it's yours. So they're working through what that means, but we're doing the same thing here in Gitanya. And what does that mean? Does that mean we're going to kick out a whole bunch of people that are living on our territory? No, we're, we're not like that. That's not us. But there will be new landlords. There'll be a new way of doing things. We're more sustainable. We look at the long term and not these four year election cycles where I gotta I gotta boom this economy in order to get reelected back in. No, there's a way of doing it. You have to sustain both economics and environment at the same time. So you kids that's going to be a big burden. We win title, we're going to take care of our own land. We need all of you kids to do good in school. Continue on, keep going, because you guys are going to be running this place. I heard a cool quote uh, not too long ago. You, you young people, you're only 30% of our population, but you're 100% of our future. That's cool. So I'll leave it with that. Uh, I think I covered everything. If you guys have any questions or anything, uh, the wash like replicate it. Yeah. But these are the originals. These are the originals. All these are 150 to 80 years old, and you're supposed to let the totem poles fall down to the ground and come back into the earth. But with the pandemic and everything that happened, so many people are lost that they said we got to preserve this because it's going to be lost. It actually men, means land of many people. And our name changed to Kitmon Fu, which means narrow valley right in between here because so many people died from the pandemic, so many people died from the wars that we changed our name to Kitmon In 1994, they felt the populations got high enough. We're getting out again. Good. So, five at a time. Sure. It's kind of doing well economically. Yeah. People yeah, want to guess. see, but nobody wants to pay. Right, yeah. So, well, uh, but uh, we're getting a new office, and I want to do a proper business plan for this place because I think we can do it. Tourism's back. Even if it's part of the year or something. Yeah. Well, you can. You guys see that guy right there? Yeah. A little bit scary, but. <laughs> Remember, I was telling you the guy got arrested and he wrote a letter? Oh, where's that? This is him. Oh. He was an a honorary doctorate of, in UBC, I believe. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's him. He was thrown in jail. That's so cool. I like how these totems are in the middle. This big coffer is pretty cool. That's one of our, the house group's crests. And their name's Wana Hayech. Copper, that copper shield is Hayech. That's what that means. What's that? Oh, that she's a model. <laughs> you guys see that little thing?